Well, we know what day this is. Amen. Glory. Praise God. This is, you know, uh, Chris, Christians like to celebrate Christmas and Easter. I mean, those are our days. <laughs> the birth and the resurrection. Amen. Uh, you know, there is so much conversation that, that's out there. And I'd just like to equip you with knowledge so that you can actually be relevant in any kind of conversation that comes your way. Amen. Because we are, we are enlightening people to who they are in Christ Jesus, who they are to God, and they ought to get excited about it. Amen. Uh, I am torn between two topics, so I'm just going to open my mouth and whatever I start talking about, that's the direction we're going to go. Go over to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, this is in my heart to start with this scripture, especially for today. You know, like, um, we're celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a celebration. By the way, this is not a funeral. Don't y'all be looking sad. Amen. Y'all better put a smile on your face. I'm going to come pinch your cheeks. I'm going to just come pinch them so I get them. Get a little life and light and color in them cheeks. Though y'all brown, still get a little pink in there some kind of way. Amen. Praise God. And this is a great day. This is a great day. So let's let's go over here and um, talk about what I what I, if you did y'all some people crazy enough to listen to me this morning. Y'all still think I'm saved? Okay, good. <laughs> I've been. I've been treading on this water for a while. I thought I'd just come right out with it. But if y'all don't listen to me in the morning, it's okay. Y'all still think I'm saying amen. But here in uh, Philippians chapter uh, 2, verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen? amen. Now say this with me. I will let... This mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. I like the word let. That puts you in control. Let. It's being offered to you. Amen. You don't have to uh, be, you have to strain for it, fast for it, pray for it. Just let. Everybody go with me. Say let. See, I'm going to let it be in me. Amen. It's a gift from God. Just let it take it. Just let the mind that was in him be in you. Then it goes on and it reads, it says, Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taken on the form. It's, impor it's important that you understand the word form. Everything that takes on a form has limitations. Every everything that takes on a form has limitations. You are in a form, so you have limitations. Amen. And many of us are conscious of what our limitations are. Amen. Especially as we get older. <laughs> When we were young, we thought we could do anything. As we get old, we find out, no, we can't do anything. Amen. Especially when we want to do it. Amen. So if you're in a form, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the, uh, to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, uh, there has been some abridgments and some adaptations made to Scripture. And one of the things, that's why I said I'm, uh, I'm between two thoughts. Uh, taking what we talked about this morning and going further with it, but most of you didn't hear this morning's message, and so going further wouldn't be beneficial to you. But just to briefly say that uh, there was a group of people, a group of men who are not identified, that took scriptures, all the scriptures that was written. They collected all the scriptures that were really written, and they made a vote on which scriptures would be canonized and which scriptures would not be. So after they made this vote on which scriptures would be canonized, these scriptures that was canonized would be considered and called the word of God. 
So what you have in your lap called your Bible is there by vote of men whom you don't know. They just actually call themselves the, the church. They didn't, they didn't identify themselves with any other distinction but the church, and they could, took the scriptures that you call Bible, canonized those, and then other writings that were there that they didn't canonize, they put aside. Sometimes they even burnt them to destroy them. Amen. But you had no say on what the word of God is and was to be placed in what you call the holy word of God, the Bible. And you have it divided into uh, covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. And we, because of our natural born innocence and, amen, and credulity, we want to believe everything and everyone that has an authority. So we have sincerely taken to heart what was taught us and run with it. Hey, this is the wrong with that. Don't look sad. Every person on earth does that. Amen. If you didn't do that, you're not here. Every person on earth trusts some type of authority to give them some insight of what they call life, and especially when it comes to church, what we call Christianity. We want somebody to tell me, how do I serve God? I love God. God loves me so much. What do I do to serve God? Now, anybody ever felt like that? So don't be mad. Don't be scared. I, I promise you, this is resurrection, and I'm going to keep it that way. I'm actually going to talk about resurrection. And, and the, the title this morning is Celebrate. I, so I was so blessed in my heart when I came in here and Karen talked about celebration. This is the day of celebration and rejoicing. Amen. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Da -da 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 -da. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He has me. Yeah. Don't make me sing. If I have to sing, we're all in trouble, right? <laughs> so celebrate. This is the time of celebrating, but actually laying hold to that which was accomplished for you. We don't want his coming to be in vain. We want, we want the fact that he came that, and we be the success to his coming because he came to set right some things that was wrong. Some belief systems, some fallen things that was believed, practiced, that was wrong. He came to set them yeah. right. Yeah. Amen. He was, he was, he was, he's known in our day as a revolutionary. Amen. He was a rebel, especially to the then established church or believers or Judaism or whatever you want to call it. And he came, he came against them, and he came against them in such a way they were mad at him. They were so mad at him, they spread a rumor that he was spreading sedition, that he was coming against Rome, and they wanted Rome to get him because they, this, they couldn't get him, so they wanted Rome to get him. And Rome was kind of upset with him, too, because of his teachings. He thought, they thought that maybe his teachings was liberate the people from being having this slave mentality and submitting uh, uh, to the Roman government. So we, maybe we ought to get it. So, man, he was, he, was, he was between two opinions, and it wasn't good, but he was bold to tell the truth and to demonstrate that truth so that you can see it. He not only preached the word of God, he demonstrated the word of God. And he even said to, the, to, to this point, if you don't believe what I say about myself, at least believe the work. And see, that's where we all should be. He came as an example of us. How should we be? Uh -huh. Amen. And it's just not believing four principal things that makes you a believer. It's actually adopting the teachings and his wisdom, applying it to your life and having success. Everybody say, God wants us to succeed. God wants us to Okay, now, amen. Let's go over to Romans real quick. Romans chapter 8. Amen. Now, I, I don't have no depressing message. I don't, it all depends on how you take it. Praise God. And I can get, I can preach on that too. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We won't use some of these scriptures that these folks chose for us because, see, God is smarter than men. 
Amen. 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 Even in your craftiness, he can fix you. Yes. <laughs> so Romans chapter 8, verse 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, look at your neighbor say, God is for us. Who can be against us? Who can be against us? I'm a, I, I, I pause on purpose. You know, God is for you. God is for me. Who can be against you? You know, uh, uh, you know, you know. We have this this case of bullying today on our. Playgrounds in our schools, in society, in social media, people bully people. So bullying is not uh, new, you know. And uh, if you were the type of person uh, that were bullied, or you might even have been the bully in school, it always was it always your fate was determined by who your friend was. You might be a little weakling nerd and people like to pick on you, but you, if you had the right friend, uh -huh. amen, if you had the right friend, though you was nerdy and, and, and weak and yes. looked like you wanted to be bullied, they would never look at you. They would look at your friend that was standing behind you. And if you had the right friend, they would pass you by. Uh -huh. They would not bully you. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So in this system, fallen mindset, what is bullying you? If God is for you, what bully in life can be against you? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God is for us. Say, say I will not be bullied in this life. God is for me. I will not be bullied in this life. He who did not, goes on to read in verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely, freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? See that Come on, seeing that he's for you, who's going to bring a chart? See, there is now no condemnation. A lot of people think that morality, all right, is a way into the presence of God and into the way of blessings if you're a moral person. But there are a lot of moral people who do not acknowledge God. Uh -huh. They live very moral and peaceful life, but they do not acknowledge God. Respect God. Amen. Amen. And they don't particularly acknowledge or respect you. But uh -huh. morally speaking, they're above board. Yeah. And there's a lot of folk that profess God and acknowledge God and say Jesus the Lord may not be morally fit. Wow. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. may, may not be morally doing what you think they should do with their morality. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And you might be looking at them all strange. Praise God. But you can't judge them. No, no. Oh, yeah. praise God. I said you can't judge them. Because there ain't no condemnation to them. There's no condemnation to them. No, no. Look at your neighbor and say, there's no condemnation to them or to me. Amen. Come on. <laughs> who should bring a charge against God's elect? It is who? It is who? God. Come on, God. say that with me. It is who? God. It is who? God. Come on now. It is who? God. I want you to see this. It is who? It is God, God. who justifies. It is who? God. It is who? God. I know y'all don't want to say it. I know you don't want to say it, but it's right there. It yeah. is God. God. Come on now. God. It is God. God. It is God. God. So how can you curse what God has blessed? Come on. How can you do it? What makes you the moral judge Come of an individual? Come on. Oh, 
Now, this is the problem with so many believers. They're mad because they don't like what God loves. See, if, you know, if, if, if God loves you and shows you favor and you don't like the person who God loves, you're going to try to tear down their character. You're going to try to spread gossip on them. You're going to try to have other people not like them because you don't like them. But it's not you that justified them. It was who? So I want to say, come on, say it like you know it. It was who? Come on now. It was God who justifies. Verse 34, who is he who condemns? Who is he who condemns? Who is he who condemns? It is Christ, uh uh-oh, who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at what? The right hand of God. Who has also, I'm sorry, who also makes what? In a session, what? For us. Who shall separate us? This is what I wanted to get to. Who shall separate us from the love of God or from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are Accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But I want to back it up. Who's going to separate you from the love of God? Uh-huh. Now, none of what was listed can separate you from the love of God. But there's something that came to my mind that I want to bring up to you. Not even what you did in your past. All right. See, a lot of times there is no charge about what you're doing today because today you are moral but it will try to take your mind back to your past to condemn you. You know when you were 23 years old, you was a little da-da-da-da-da-da in them streets, and that is why you are going through what you're going through today. It ain't got nothing to do with your righteousness today. It has to do with the seeds you sowed way back then. And that seed that you sowed back then is stepped in between you and God. But this strip, this scripture said, what can separate me from God? And the word is nothing, not nothing in my future and nothing in my past. You can't, you can't bring my past up against me. Come on now. My past ain't got nothing to do with my being blessed today because every morning his mercies and his blessings upon my life is new. Somebody ought to say it's new. This is the day that God has made with me in mind. And in this day, I will celebrate, rejoice. Oh, Suki, now. You got to understand the way that Jesus thought. Remember, we started this off. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. In you. You got to let it in. You got to let it in. You got to let it in. Oh, man. So we kind of talked a little bit about all the types of stories about Christianity, about God and his relationship with men that we have heard all our life. We talked about it this morning. And, and, and one of the things, you know, I just capsulize all the things I've been taught when I was smaller in Sunday school and other places about the devil. The devil. Folks need a devil. And whenever I come around and try to get rid of a devil, Christians get, Christians, Christians get mad at me because I get rid of the devil. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because they need a devil. Uh-huh. Come on. So I kind of try to capsulize this. And I'm gonna now that I got a live folk. This morning I didn't have live people, but I got live people today. How many of you think that God is all powerful? All of you. Me too. Now, all to me, there ain't nothing left over. 
He all. He all. Paul. Now, how many of you think that God would create a creature that would grow up to be more powerful than him? To be smarter than him. And 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 why do we assign this created being power greater than God? He we make him so smart that through his strategy he robbed God of every and all of God's creation. Huh? Now, when he was created, when he was created, he's called an air, uh, angel, a cherubim, and he is created with limitations. You know, he has to go one place at a time, and and then you know the way my story is when a sense good, where they put him in a pit, and some kind of way he got out of the pit. Amen. And he re- he he started a rebellion in heaven. Got. Three quarters of heaven, all messed up. <laughs> Came down when God put men in the Garden of Eden. Came down as a serpent, a, a creature that God created. He entered this serpent and talked to Eve, and persuaded Eve <laughs> to eat from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. They said that he's a liar. But if you read that, that serpent didn't tell a lie. He didn't lie about nothing. Uh, I know. I know, I, I, that, that shocks me because they want to make him a liar from the beginning and they call that the beginning. By the way, that wasn't the beginning. Wow. He didn't lie. Now, wait a minute. Now, let's step back. I want y'all to keep God in mind when I'm telling you this. Isn't he all knowing? Yes. Isn't he the same everywhere and everywhere the same? Yes. Isn't he the past, the present, and the future? Oh, yeah. How is it that you suppose that God did not know that the man and the woman was going to eat from the tree? But this is the story we are told. Because people can't explain good and evil. Uh-huh. They, they can't explain the bad things that happen to them. So they want to put this on a being called Satan or the devil, something else besides them. I'm going to tell you something. You the problem. Come on. Come on. But I get to that in a minute. I want to talk about the, assertive, the how absurd it is to think that a created being can rob God from his creation and blackmail him, hold his creation in bondage, and God can't do nothing about it besides pay a ransom like he kidnapped all of humanity? Please. Who do you think you're serving? But if you think that, let me tell you what happens if you think that. If you think that, then you don't have enough gumption to resist the challenges that happen in your body. All right, come on. If you think sickness and disease come from Satan and Satan outwitted the, your God, and there's sickness and disease that's coming in your body, he's the author of it, but he's great enough to outwit God, so that means he's great enough and more powerful to make you sick. And to keep you from being oh, thank you, prosperous. Thank you, Come on. Oh. Come on. And you gotta work to do this, and you gotta pray to do this, and you gotta fast to do this, you gotta get God's favor. You're always scared of offending God. All right. Hello. All right. 
And then at the same time, on the other side of your mind, your mind says, well, God is love. How can I feel love? So you're tossed to and fro. And you have no energy for this life besides to succumb to whatever life tells you. So this is why we're celebrating. Jesus took on a form to reconcile your mind from this fallen state and put you back at the throne where you belong. You've been believing a lie too long. So he came and said, let me come as a man to show you what mankind can do. Come on, talk to me. Yes, yes. Paul caught it. He says, if God would to be upset about anything, it's because you have not entered his rest. Uh You need to enter the rest of God. Quit trying to work it out. It's been worked out for you. And to receive. Expect and receive. You can't blackmail God into blessing you. You can't blackmail God into giving you a miracle. You have power within you. Jesus came and he says, y'all are looking up to the skies, looking here and there, expecting and asking me, when is the kingdom coming? Well, let me tell you something. The kingdom comes without observation. What? Yes, the kingdom is in you. You walking around with the kingdom, denying the power that's in you. You look into the skies, you're going to the east, you're going to the north, you're going to a shrine, you're bowing your knee to a shrine, to a statue. When the kingdom is in you. God is not far from you, he's with you. Who can separate you? What can separate you from the kingdom? If the kingdom is in you, it's in whatever you're going through. If it's in you, it's wherever you live. If it's in you, it's whatever you drive it. If it's in you, come on, talk to me. Went around here like with your head cut off, not knowing where to go. But wisdom is in you. The mind of Christ is in you to the point that God says, let this mind be. Why? Because it's in you. Set your mind above for Christ to see it. Set it above. Set it above. Start thinking like he did. Where's that Holy Spirit? I think it's... Somebody tell me where the, the heat, I think it's in Matthew chapter 9, the healing of the paralytic. The man that was paralyzed, he was healed. That, that comes to my mind. I, I, I think, let's go, no, it's in Matthew. This chapter 9, verse 1. And so he got into a boat, and that's crossing. And once he came to the scratch of the end of the tent, he was last seen. Da, da, da. Am I in chapter 9 of Matthew? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, he says to the, the uh, there's another account of it then. That's a better account. It may be Mark or Luke. Let's try Luke chapter 5, 17. Hold on, everybody on video, because I got, I got, I got, you got I'm, I'm on purpose on this one. You got to see this. You got to see this. You got to see this. I know we do all this little traditional stuff, and I, and I, and, I, and sometimes I want to apologize for not being traditional. When I started off pastoring, I was traditional eggs. I used to have a Good Friday service. I was talking to my wife the other day, and I said I didn't have no Good Friday service. She said, Oh yes, you did. I said, I don't remember it. <laughs> you know, you ever do something and you forget because you don't want to be identified with what you did? That must be what I was uh, Because there's no way to get three days from Friday to Sunday morning. Uh-huh. A good Friday. And what's so good about it? Unless you see it from a proper perspective. Yeah. Amen. Now here it says in verse 17, Luke chapter 5. 
Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was, who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. And see, you get a Jesus in your house and your house get towed up. Mm, mm, mm. The people just start tearing up your house. And when he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, 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 man. See, now people say that because he was Jesus, he could do this. No, 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 no. Follow the thought. It isn't because he's Jesus that he has any special power. It's the mind. It's the logic that he operated under. Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? Watch this but that you may know ah, that you may know uh -huh. that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins he said to the man who was paralyzed I say to you arise take up your bed and go to your own house who has power to forgive sins let's go over to um, John, y'all tracking with me? See, y'all sitting up there praying. What you praying for? Lord, send down the blessing. Lord, send down the blessing. And you got to understand, God can't send a blessing because that means he would be supporting your illusion and the lie you're living in. He can't answer your prayer. Because if he answered your prayer, he would be supporting your lie uh -huh. and denying the truth. Wow. Just because you believe the lie don't mean God's going to bless it. Watch this. Then the same day at evening, being first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad, and they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Y'all looking at verse 23. I know y'all looking at me, but can, do you have an electronic old Bible? Look at verse 23. If you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Where is God in that? The power of God rests and resides in you. The yes. wisdom of God rests and resides in you. Yes. Yes. You're believing yes. for what you already have. Uh -huh. yes. Come on. Yes, yes. Because your head is in the way. Yes. I said your head is in the way. All the stories you heard preached over the pulpit is in the way. Everything that you heard your parents and your grandparents say about limitations are in the way. Yeah. So there's, those things are in your subconscious. They yeah. stand as prompters. And every time you 
try to believe God, the prompter say, oh no, we don't do that. We don't associate with that. We black folk can't go there. We black people can't do this. You are a woman. You can't ascend so high. You are whatever. And you can't. Whatever your circumstance is, all of a sudden, your circumstance has robbed you of the blessings and the promises of God. When God said to you, all my promises, somebody ought to help me with this. All my promises are, yay, come on, talk to me, somebody. All my promises are, yay, and a man. Quit talking yourself out of living the good life. Paul writes it this way. He says, he says, be so blessed. Be so blessed in your everyday life that you do not grow weary. Come on now. You do not grow weary in well doing. You ought to be blessed to the point that you get weary from being blessed. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know nobody that's blessed like that yet. But God has invited you into a space that says you are blessed going in. Come on now. Blessed going out. Blessed where you're seated, where you're standing. The ground that you're standing on is blessed because you are a blessing. But you make up excuses. Oh, why you can't? Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, I'm not worthy. God said you were worthy. Quit fussing with your creator. You didn't create yourself. And he created you worthy. To the point the scripture says, now that you're coming to your worthiness, be. Be. This is how God does things. He spoke to darkness and he says, light. He says, light. Be. And if I'm reading scripture right, it was four days later that he created an explanation for the light. <laughs> but light was there. Come on now. Without the sun, without the moon. But simply because he said, be light was. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So here again God is saying be. Quit looking at what your life looks like now and just move into be. Be ye holy. Why? Because your father is holy. Be. Come on now. You just need to quit saying I'm not. You are not a sinner born in sin. You came from your father. And as he is, so are you. He's holy, so am I. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about nothing. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about nothing. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about nothing. Because God has already prepared the way for you. He's already prepared the way for you. It's called a way of escape so that you may be able to bear. Come on now. So that you may be able to bear. So that you may be able to bear. Say, I'm able to bear whatever comes into my life. Because I will be, come on now, I will be, come on now, what God has created me to what? Be. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. You need to get that junk out of your head. As a man thinks, so is he. And your thought is greater than matter. Thought controls matter. Thoughts will change the molecular structure of your body. Thought will heal that which grew errant. Thought will heal that which is crooked. Thought will heal whatever convictions you have and whatever faith you put there. You begin to create the experience. You bring into reality the resource that makes it real for you. It was real before it came into your senses. It was real before you thought of it, but because you thought it, because you received it, because now you expect it, it will show up. Yeah. 
If it's true about everything bad, why can't it be true about everything good? Anytime something bad happens to your life, you go, I knew that would happen. All right, come on. I knew this could last. I knew. Uh, you need to change. Because if it's the power of what you know, you need to change what you know. That's why the scripture, y'all stay with me. The scripture says, As a man thinks, it's Proverbs. Uh -huh. As a man thinks, as a man thinks, the scripture says, you will know the truth. Come on, talk to me now. You will know the truth. And the truth. And the truth. And the truth, <laughs> and the truth, <laughs> and the truth. Now, when we do the map of consciousness, we talk about your further distance from the truth. The furthest distance from the truth you can get is dead. Right after dead is called shame. And if you are dealing with shame, your mind and your emotions are not seeing yourself and your relationship with God properly. And we move on up in this map of consciousness. You get around to courage. It's interesting that everything below courage is considered carnal. Everything below courage is considered walking in darkness. Everything below courage sees God as vindictive, sees God as abandoning me. Everything below courage. But if you move on up to courage, the scripture says, be ye courageous. Come on now. Take courage. Be courageous in all things. Watch this. And if you meditate on anything with, cur with courage, you will have what you see in your mind. And here come our celebration. Our, oh, come on now. Here come our celebration. Our celebration, who we're celebrating today, he don't start at courage. He says, dwell in, abide in, love. He says, because love ooh, fulfills everything else. If you start here at love, oh, come on now. If you start at love, abide in love, you will begin to process and see life differently. If you abide in love, you will begin to see mankind differently. If you abide in love, you will process life differently. You will see your opportunities. You will see where the stones are in the water so you don't never sink. You will be able to see your steps are ordered by God. If you abide in love, you're filled with intentions because now what I see, I know that I will have because there's nothing that can separate me. Oh, we read back from the beginning. There's nothing that can separate me. There is nothing Nothing that can separate me. It, oh. There is nothing that can separate me, not my doubting, because when I'm doubting, he is faithful. Not my faithfulness, faithlessness, because when I'm faithless, he is faithful. Why? Because of the love. Y'all got to get this. It's the love. Have faith in God's love. Be courageous, be bold, be strong. Knowing that you will never lose, you'll never be forsaken. Because what you don't know about yourself, God knows all about it. 
Closing with this. Closing with this. So what do I do with the hardships? What do I do with the contradictions? How do I handle it? James says it this way. He said, count it. Count it. <laughs> Peter said it like this, you peculiar. People are gonna say you peculiar. Because when everybody is moaning and groaning, you're rejoicing. When everybody is fearful, you're bold and brave. You unmoved, unshaken, you're steadfast, you are peculiar. Why? Because I learned how to navigate life. I learned that when I run into a hardship or a contradiction, is that I'm moving and I'm digressing from the truth. And the hardship and contradiction came to let me know, you're moving away from the truth. Then I said, oh, thank you. So I have a metanoa moment. I turn around, come on now. I renew my mind. And I started going back in the right direction. So when blessings come into my life, I count it all joy. Why? Because I know that I'm progressing closer and closer Troy truth. I'm getting closer to truth, closer to truth, to the point that I get into God's light and started experiencing enlightenment. And in enlightenment, there is no darkness. In enlightenment, there is no shallow turning. Now, when you move it in this truth, a peculiar thing will happen to your body because you have now tied into the vine and the vine is producing sap through your, your branches and it's health and it's prosperity and it's peace and it's joy. And you don't know what happened. What happened? What happened? You move closer and when you get close to it, the truth, come on now, is faithful to make, come on now, you free. Quit trying to get free. Just be free. What truth did I want you to start with? Start with the truth that cannot be argued, not even by you. I am an infinite being. And this sensation that is happening in my body, I am not subject to that. I used to believe in that. I don't believe in that no more. I cancel that. I'm only subject, come on, talk to me, to that which I hold in my mind. Because I know as I think, come on now. Reckon yourself to be dead to all those sensations. Reckon yourself to be dead to this life's hardship, to this life's sickness, but alive. But alive. But alive. But alive. <laughs> but alive. When I lay down this body, I will still be alive. I will never know nor ever taste death. Oh. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm too busy living. I'm too busy bearing witness of the faithfulness of God. Every hardship demands that I perform a miracle. A miracle of healing, a miracle of finances, a miracle of peace. A miracle of steadfastness. I'm in a position to perform a miracle. So I'm thankful that in this body is going to bear the fruit of the power of God. Because there is nothing too hard for God. Not what I'm going through, not what I'm feeling. Because if you want to have a devil, he don't have more power than the love that God has for you. Say this with me. All, All my, sin my sin has been forgiven. I will, I will rise, up rise up and be blessed. And be 
We hope that something was said to you on this Resurrection Sunday that will stir you. And we want you to remember that God has plans for your life. And none of those plans include David. Amen.